Imagine you're playing Texas Hold'em poker and you have a pocket pair of two in your hand. The flop comes out queen of diamonds, four of hearts, nine of spades. The question you need to ask yourself is, how many cards will make me win here? If the other players at the table are betting like they have a queen, a nine, or a four, or maybe even two pairs, the question you need to ask yourself, what cards need to come out for me to win? And in this case, there's only two cards in the deck that make you win, and it would be if a two comes out because that gives you a three of a kind. In poker, the cards that make you win, they're called outs. And in this video, we'll break down the math behind the 2-4 rule to calculate the probability of making your hand and winning big pots. If you're new here, I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who holds a master's degree in statistics. Let's consider another hand where you have king jack of spades. So you're hoping for some spades to come out so you can hit your flush. And on the flop, fair enough, you have two spades and it's the ace of spades. And you have the king of spades, so you have the best flush possible. So that gives you the nuts if you hit your flush. And the nuts is essentially you're pretty much guaranteed to have the best hand. So I encourage you to pause the video here and count the number of outs that you have. Here the number of outs are all the spades. And whenever you have a flush draw, there's always nine spades left in the deck. They could be in the other player's hands, but you don't know that. They're, as far as you know, they're just random cards, right? So whether the cards are in the deck or in the player's hands makes no difference. So now that we have the flop, the next card is a turn and the last card is a river. So it's either you hit on the turn. So how many good cards do you have? You have N good cards. In this case, it's nine. How many cards are left in the deck? Well, there's 52 cards in the deck and there's five of them taken out. So it's N out of 47. 52 minus 5 is 47. And then how many bad cards? So you miss on the turn. Well, there's uh, 47 minus n. So for example, if n is 9, then you'd have 38. So it's 47 minus n over 47. So that's a probability that you, it doesn't work. So in this case, it'd be 38 over uh, 47. So it's actually pretty likely that you miss. But then there's another card. So then you multiply the branches of that tree and there, there's more math behind that, but you can just multiply the branches. So what are the odds that you hit on the river? Well, how many good cards are left in the deck? You didn't hit on the first time. So you still have nine of them. So N of them, those are the odds that you hit over how many cards are left in the deck now? Well, there's only 46 cards. Finally, what are the odds that you miss? Well, there's 46 cards left in the deck minus the nine good ones. So minus N over 46. So what's the probability that you do hit your card when you multiply the branches? It's either you hit it right away. So it's either the probability that you hit is equal to is the probability that you hit right away the first branch or that you hit on the river. So it'd be, or that's a plus and then and is a multiplication sign. So that's 47 minus N over 47 times N over 46. So that's the probability where N is the number of outs, super important in this case, it's nine, but we want a general formula. So let's simplify this formula a bit because there's basic algebra that we can do. Uh, this we want a common denominator, so I'll multiply it by 46. So it'll be 46n on top. I'll multiply the bottom by 46 as well. So that gives us our common denominator. The top we multiply into both terms. So we get 47n minus n squared over the common denominator. Now that we have a common denominator, we just add the fractions, 46 plus 47, that is 93, I believe, minus n squared over 46 times 47. So this is a quadratic equation, an equation of second degree, it's a parabola, in other words. And we see that since it's divided by one over a big number, it's, it's a very flat parabola that approximates a line. So that's where the 
2-4 rule comes in, it's essentially a linear approximation of a parabola. Let's just plug in n, which was 9 in this case, into this equation. And when we do so, we get a probability of 34.97%, so roughly 35%. And the 2-4 rule says that if we have 9 outs, so it's the number of outs times 4 when we're on the flop, so here we had 9 times 4, 9 times 4, which is 36%. So you see that 36% is very close to 35%, and we don't have time to do a quadratic uh, evaluation in, our, in the game. We just want a rough rule that gives us close enough numbers so we can make educated bets given the pot odds. I created this chart in Desmos. All the links will be in the description below. And what you see here is in blue, you have the two rule. So you multiply by two when you're on the turn and you have the four rule in green on top uh, where you multiply by four when you're on the flop, when there's two cards left. I like this visualization because in blue, you see that N over 46, that's a line. That's uh, X over a coefficient. That's just a linear equation. Whereas the green uh, equation, you clearly see that it's a downward parabola because it was minus n squared. And it doesn't matter much uh, when you are you don't have that many outs, like most of the time you don't have 40 outs, but as you increase the number of outs, you clearly see the parabola starting to diverge from the linear approximation. So the linear approximation, the two rule in blue is the blue dash line, and the four rule in in green is the dash line as well so you, you see that the dash line is very close to the curve for when there's less than nine outs or ten outs it starts to diverge a bit the distance between the dash line and the actual curve is very small the final mathematical concept that i want to cover in this video it's called expected value or ev for short often referred to in poker and the expected value formula, it's, a, it's essentially uh, the amount you win times the probability of, uh, of winning that uh, minus the amount you lose times the probability of losing that. Okay, so what's the probability that we win with our King Jack suited? Well, there's nine outs and we do times four. So that's roughly 36%. We saw that the actual probability is 35%, but who cares? We'll use the uh, two four rule. So the probability is 0 0.36. The amount we'd win if the pot is 45 and the bet is 20 is uh, $65 minus the amount we'd lose, which is what we need to call with $20, right? So we lose 20 bucks and the probability that we lose is pretty high here. It's 64%. So when you plug that in, what do you get? So here we get a value of 10.6, which means that on average, if we played this hand an in infinite number of time, we'd win $10.6 if there was no further betting. Of course, there might be further betting and you, you'll have to think about what you're gonna do when you don't hit the, the flush, but on average, you should call this hand. Last, I just wanted to show you on Cards Chat, they have a useful PDF that you can download for free and they show a common situation. So for example, we've seen the pocket pairs. Sometimes you have ace eight and basically here you only have three outs because you're hoping for an ace and they give you the exact probabilities as well. So hopefully now that you understand the two four rule and expected value, you're ready to crush your friends at poker. And as always, thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below.